Hello, Internet! So nice to see you! Today we're gonna see how negative harmony works. Negative harmony is actually a very simple idea, and it's been made mysterious because all the explanation I've seen out there gloss over a number of little details. Once you know those details, though, negative harmony is actually very easy. So let's start seeing how a major scale, a standard major scale, work. And so let's work in C major. The notes of C major are C, D, E, F, G, A, B. Those notes, though, are not all created equal. Some of those notes are stable and some others are active, specifically C, E and G, so the notes of the tonic triad are stable, and all the other notes D, F, A and B are active. Active means that they want to resolve into another note. They want to be followed by another note. For instance, the seventh note, the B, wants to be followed by a C. So it has this upward tendency. The sixth note, the A, wants to resolve down on G. The fourth note, the F, wants to resolve down on F. And finally, the second note, the D, wants to resolve, but it's pretty much indifferent if you resolve it up to E or down to C. Now, when you take into account those tendency to move of those notes, you see that the first chord of the key, C major, made by the notes C, E and G, is perfectly stable because it's made only by stable note. But for instance, the fifth chord of the key, G major, that is made by the notes G, B and D, wants to resolve because it contains those B and D notes that wants to resolve into the C and the E note respectively. And the fourth chord of the key, F major, made by the notes F, A and C, wants to resolve the F and the A note, respectively, to the E and the G note. Stay with me here, we are getting to the negative harmony really soon. Now, those notes we have just seen are the white keys on a piano, but we need to see them in the chromatic scale, so let me add also the black keys of the piano. And that's what happens. And we can also put them on a circle this way. Now, here's the negative harmony part. If we flip the major scale around these axes, every note of the major scale gets mapped, gets transformed into another note. So, for instance, the C note becomes a G note, and the G note becomes a C note, and the E note becomes an E flat, and vice versa, an F note becomes a D note, and vice versa, a B note becomes an A flat note, and vice versa, and so on, and so forth. And what happens is that our major scale C, D, E, F, G, A, B gets mapped into a C minor scale C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C. But even more important, we notice that all the stable notes in the C major scale C, E and G get transformed into all the stable notes in the C minor scale C, E flat and G. And all the active notes in the C major scale, D, F, A, B, get transformed into active notes into the C minor scale, D, F, A flat, B flat. But it's even better than that, because all the active notes that wanted to resolve up, like B or D, get transformed into notes that wants to resolve down, like A flat or F, and vice versa. So here is what negative harmony is is to take a melody, or a chord, or a chord progression and transform it this way, note by note. So, if I have a C major chord, it gets transformed into a C minor chord. If I have a G major chord, it gets transformed into an F minor chord. Since all the stable notes become stable notes, and all the active notes become active notes, we can be sure that wherever we start and wherever we end, we get the same level of tension in the melody or the chord, and all the relationships, all the resolutions are respected. For instance, a short melody that contains only the notes B and C 
gets transformed into a short melody that contains only the notes A flat and G. And so if the original melody or chord progression sets up some tension and then resolve it, so the transform chord progression or melody will do exactly the same. Now, by far, the most common way to use negative harmony is when we get the fifth chord of the key. So let's say I take a chord progression like C, F, G, C. If I apply the negative harmony only on the G chord, this G chord becomes an F minor chord, and my chord progression becomes C, F, F minor, C. You can hear how this F minor has some tension, just like the G major has some tension, and then this tension pushes you towards the final C chord. Now, here's the fun. If instead of having a G triad, I had a G7 chord, so C, F, G7, C, and I apply negative harmony to this G7 only, I get a D half diminished chord. The notes are D, F, A flat, C. And the chord progression is now C, F, D half diminished, C. Again, negative harmony keeps stable note into stable notes and active notes into active notes, so since the original G7 chord had some tension in it, the final D diminished chord has some tension in it too, and they resolve into the same stable C major chord. Now I can apply this to other chord progression too. Let's say I have C, A minor, F, G. I could apply negative harmony only on the A minor and the G chord. The A minor chord would be transformed to an E flat chord, and the G major, as we have seen, to an F minor. So my final chord progression is C, E flat, F, F minor. Or I could keep the G as it is and change only the A minor into an E flat. Of course, I could also change the F into its negative harmony counterpart, G minor. But this is generally not done because it does not sound particularly good. I mean, hear that. I'm changing only the F into G minor, my chord progression is C, A minor, G minor, G major. It doesn't sound particularly good. And this is because negative harmony is not foolproof. It's not that every possible change will work, it's just that negative harmony gives you some option and then you have to decide what sounds best. Let's see another couple of examples. My chord progression is C, D minor, G7, C. I can change D minor only into his negative harmony counterpart, B flat. And this sounds good, or I can change only G7 into the D half diminished. Or I can change both D minor and G7. Or I can even do a partial change. So I'm gonna keep C as C for the whole bar. When D minor comes, I'm gonna play D minor for the first half bar and B flat for the next half bar. And when the next chord G7 comes, I'm gonna change the first half. I'm gonna play F minor for half bar and then G for another half bar and end up in C. Here I am applying negative harmony to chord progression, but you can apply it to melodies too. Just take every single note of the melody, flip it around against that axis, play the new melody and hear how it sounds. You can apply this even to a whole song and see what happens. Now, a question you might have right now is why we flip all those notes along that specific axis and not any other axis? And the answer is because this is the only axis that transforms stable notes into stable notes and active notes into active notes, 
and also transforms the major scale, the C major scale, into a C minor scale. Any other axis will not transform active nodes into active nodes and stable nodes into stable nodes. And so when you transform your chords this way, it will not sound good because you are messing up all the tension structure of your chord progression. So negative harmony is simply flipping notes around these axes and transforming melodies into other melodies and chords into other chords. There is really not much to it beyond that. It's very useful, it creates interesting harmonies, but it's not a big mystery. The thing here is that you can make the most of negative harmony only if you know your standard harmony the right way. The more you are familiar with your chords and harmony, and then the more the negative harmony will work for you because you have more possibilities, more chord progression in which you can flip chords into the negative harmony. If you are a guitar player, you can learn advanced harmony straight on your fretboard with my course Complete Chord Mastery where we cover everything from triad, extended jazz chords, progression, substitution, moving out of key, modulation, augmented six chord, dissonant harmony, harmonizing melodies in different styles, and especially how to translate all that in actual guitar parts that you can play live or in studio. You can find the link to Complete Chord Mastery in the description. You can take the Complete Chord Mastery course whether you are an absolute beginner or you are already advanced. And this because we are studying together starting from the basics, but we do those basics in a different, more coherent way than what you normally see. So even an advanced player will learn a lot of new things by seeing harmony this way. Now, how are you going to use negative harmony? If you have any more questions about this or you have any other questions about any other topic in music theory, please write it in the comment. I want to make more videos like this when I answer your questions. If you like this video, click on that like button or smash it, I'm not going to hold this against you. If you like this channel, subscribe and make sure to click on notifications so YouTube will tell you every time I put up a new video. This is Tommaso Zilli of MusicTheoryForGuitar.com and until next time, enjoy.